OK, before we continue the monitoring stuff, let's talk about CI and continuous deployment, because this kind of sets the stage for uh, some of the automation that we're going to do around deployment. Um, this is, uh, you know, you're probably all too young to remember this. There was a time when Windows 95 was new. It was the first time Windows had a uh, really kind of a defensible graphical interface. And for the launch party, they spent tens of millions of dollars. They paid to light up the Empire State Building in the Windows logo colors. Uh, they licensed the song uh, Start Me Up from the Stones to play at the party. They officially licensed it. So that, it was a big deal, right? It was, it was an event. Um, today, releases are not such a major event. Um, as of 2011, Facebook pushes changes about once a week to their master branch, and they were trying to get to a schedule where they were pushing more like once a day. So they're not having release parties every day, obviously. Um, Amazon for AWS, as well as the Amazon.com uh, e-commerce site, several times a week are, are pushing to, and deployment means that they're pushing to production and millions of users are getting the code, right? Um, Stack Overflow, which by, all, by now you all use, deploys multiple times per day. Uh, GitHub de de deploys tens of times per day. Um, so the rationale, actually when you, you know, again, with extreme programming, right, if frequent releases to get customer feedback are good, then you should make them as frequent as possible because the longer the time between releases, the greater the risk that you've invested engineer hours in something that isn't going to help the customer or that isn't going to work as well as you expected. So the idea is making a lot of little changes incrementally and doing it very frequently um, is actually a, a lower risk methodology because if something goes wrong, the amount of effort you've wasted is lower. Uh, now, of course, in order to make this work out, this means that deployment to production has to be a non-event. It can't be a big deal to push the big red button that moves code to production. So that's kind of what we're going to talk about next. Um, as you might imagine, that means that successful deployment relies heavily on automation. Uh, now, you've already done deployment with Heroku, which really does more than you realize on the back end to automate what happens when you say uh, Heroku push. Um, even if you're not using past services that do this for you, there's pretty nice tools like Cap or Capistrano that will do it if you're uh, hosting your own site on a VPS. And continuous integration basically means that every time you push, you're also doing some integration testing on the app beyond what testing is normally done by each developer. So things that you might not necessarily run at each developer's test suite, but you could run in a staging or in a testing environment in the cloud, um, is you could do things like stress testing for the application. You can check for correct behavior of JavaScript across different browsers, things that wouldn't make sense for every developer to, to do on their own, but that have to be done in general when you push major releases. A very common strategy for doing this is integrating with GitHub. And I think, uh, let's uh, see if we can get this site up. Uh, no, OK, thanks. No problem. We'll just do it the manual way. Uh, so this is, let me make this a little bigger so you can read it. Uh, so this is, for any GitHub repo, you can define a set of service hooks. Service hooks are other web services that already interoperate with GitHub in the sense that whenever you do a push to GitHub, you can cause the other services to do something. Uh, so there's probably a few names in here that you might uh, recognize, like, uh, let's see, Code Climate you already recognize. You can, when you do a push to GitHub, you can automatically have Code Climate be notified of that fact and respond by running metrics on your code. Uh, what else is down here? This, I don't know what these chat things are. I'm sure Jenkins and Travis are here. Uh, Jenkins and Travis are continuous integration systems where you can set up testing scripts, and every time you push uh, a new branch or a, a new commit of your code, you can have a bunch of integration tests automatically run in the cloud. We actually have this set up experimentally for the MOOC, and we're going to try to set it up for this class in coming years. So why would you do this? What kinds of things would you connect to these hooks? Well, first of all, like we said, there's differences between the production and development environments. So there might be a set of tests that's really just focused on making sure you didn't break anything because of those differences. If you have code that's supposed to work in different browsers, for example, it's JavaScript intensive, uh, you might have some integration tests that are really just checking that, that uh, across five different popular browser types, everything works. Um, what happens if, you, if your app relies on interaction with other remote services? You want to test conditions like what happens if the other services are slow or start responding with garbage. And again, you could put that into every developer's test suite, but those are sort of cross-cutting concerns that really affect the whole application. And they're fairly expensive to test in terms of how long it takes to run those tests. So again, those are good candidates for running in a CI kind of environment in the cloud. You might have a bunch of tests about uh, targeting specific weaknesses of the app to make sure that it's not vulnerable to common hacker attacks. Stress testing, just run the app for a long time and hammer it with workload that's a little bit above the usual threshold. See what breaks first. Uh, and some features uh, or some bugs that you're going to find in features only really come out when you do this longevity testing. Uh, a concrete example of this, there was a talk a couple of years ago 
um, at a workshop that I ran where a guy from Salesforce talked about their CI process. They, when they push new code to master on Salesforce, they run over 150,000 tests. And if any of them fail, they have a system that automatically opens a bug report at whoever did the push that included the code that, had the, uh, that made the test fail. So it's quite automated. The sort of corollary to this is continuous deployment, right? If you're, if you're doing continuous integration, if every time you push to GitHub, you're getting a bunch of tests run to qualify that nothing's broken, um, you might as well just say, well, if nothing's broken, what's the harm in pushing out the code at that point? Um, and a lot of companies actually do just that. Their continuous integration is actually auto-integrated so that if the CI suite passes, it automatically deploys that code to production. Um, now, you might think this means that, well, the concept of a release is not meaningful anymore, but that's not totally true because, first of all, really a, a release, when you think about it, is a customer-centric thing, right? The customer maybe is expecting some feature or set of features to become available, and from the development point of view, there might be quite a bit of work that you have to do to make those features all function. Um, and e even though the, the feature won't sort of be unveiled to the user until all those parts are pushed out. So they're still useful for the customer's uh, milestones. And you know, a lot of sites will now start tagging their official customer releases with cute names like Happy Hippo or you know, Itchy Iguana or something. Um, or you could just use the git commit ID to identify the release. But uh, this is a pretty good, easy use of git tags. You can tag specific contours of your app so that when a customer talks about a release, only a subset of the things that you ever pushed are actually marked as releases with tags. That's you, how you know where you are. So here's a question about CI. Rotten Potatoes just got some happy new Ajax. Where does it make sense to test the Ajax feature? Uh, using the uh, standard auto test environment like you've been doing, in a CI environment, in a staging environment, which remember is an environment that is very much like production but often smaller, but it's meant to mimic in every possible way the, the actual production software stack, or should you just test it in all of these environments? <laughs> 